What's up, everybody? It's me, Justin Johnson, and I'm just hanging out here, really learning and uh, finding out some cool new stuff about some great companies that are making some really great innovations with uh, slide guitars. I mean, I mean, guitar slides. Sorry about that. So um, basically, I tried out about four or five of them right then, and you can see the table right here. I've got a great assortment from a few different companies, and I'm going to tell you about each of these. And if you have any questions too, we're live right now. If you're watching it live, uh, feel free to write in. Let me know what you're thinking when you're listening to them. Uh, I'd like to hear some of your impressions about the different slides. And if you have any questions about the tone, about how they feel, about the different features of them, that's what this is all about. So I'm gonna start off over here. This is a company, Jet Slide, that uh, makes a really cool design right here. And um, what's great about that, you might look at it and wonder, you know, that doesn't look like a guitar slide, like a normal guitar slide that you'd see. But it's a really cool idea that they have. Basically, what the Jet Slide allows you to do is it lets you play finger style just like you normally would. It feels like uh, it's actually really comfortable. Um, it doesn't impede your, your motion, your range of motion with your fingers. So you can play just like you would normally play the guitar fretted. But then all you have to do is grab that little tab with your pinky and now you kind of uh, cradle it between your ring finger and pinky. And it's actually pretty comfortable. It's, it's, it really holds on there well, it gives you some control. So then you can just use it as a slide. Go back to finger style. Slide. model they've got a uh, you know nickel model so it's more of a silver metal which sounds a little brighter I like the mellow tone of the brass another cool one they have is this uh, it's brass it's got a brass core but it's got a glass surface to it so what's that oh yeah there we go yeah so you can see the difference between the two right here there's the brass and then the glass the glass actually has a, a smoother sound so you don't get as much of that metallic sound you don't hear as much of the strings with it. And play that same riff on the brass one now. You can hear the metal a little bit more, a little more cut to this one. Which one you like better? Which one I like better? You know, I guess the answer with all of these is I like having the option to use any of them. So the best thing I think is versatility. If you only have one slide with you, then I think go with one that's the most versatile or that fits the set list that you're going to be playing. But um, to me, you know, if I want to cut through, let's say I want a really aggressive solo and I want it to cut through the bass or organ or something I might be playing in a band with, maybe I'll tend to go with the brighter sounding slide. It's got some teeth to it, you know, it cuts through. If I want more of a, a vocal quality and I really want it to sing a little more and be a little more mellow on the attack but have some nice body to the tone, then I'd probably go with the glass slide. So again, you know, 
I don't think there's anything uh, that's like a favorite of mine when it comes to slide. Um, as far as like, would I use this slide on every song no matter what? The, the answer is always no to that. So I always like to choose slides based on the situation and the tone that I'm going for. What I can say though I like about the jet slide though uh, is that it's just a, a perfect design for being able to use all five fingers on your fretting hand and still have the option to quickly pull a slide out without actually needing another hand. You know, you can do this with one hand, so. So you can see how fast you can switch over. And the secret too, I think, it's not just that you grab it with your pinky, but if you give, tilt your hand down and gravity helps guide it right into place. So when you're playing, you wanna go for that slide. Sometimes it's a little tough to just grab it with your pinky, but if you flip your hand down, you can grab it there every time, just like that. So you're playing, grab it, slide position, back to playing, Do that again. flip it, back over. You get comfortable with it and it's just a natural motion. You just flip it over, grab it, flip it over, grab it. Like the Almond Brothers in a Yeah, like Almond Brothers, yeah, on a ring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, so that's Jet Slide. The next company here that um, I've got some cool slides from, these are some great designs that sound great and have some awesome features too. This is Doc Harrison. And uh, I love his tags too. He's just got such cool aesthetics on everything he does, these old vintage tags. And the slides all look really cool and vintage too. Got some multi-surface slides here. So you have one side that's brass. You've got the other side that's bone. This one, you got one side that's brass and another side that's wood. So let's say you wanna go from a nice uh, bright sustaining tone to a different tone, like a more mellow tone. All you have to do is flip it over. So, you know, unlike the slides where you have full finger access, instead of switching techniques, you're, you're using the same slide technique, you're just switching tones. So, on this side, this is brass. I'll let you hear that. Let me switch it over to wood. So you can hear there's, there's not as much sustain at all on the wood side. And normally you'd think that's not a good thing. You know, a lot of times you want really nice long sustain with a guitar slide, but sometimes you get a nice rootsy sort of desperate quality when it, when it mutes that sustain, you know? Turn it over to the brass side. Another thing you notice with these slides is, is that they're uh, they're smaller, they're shorter in length. So um, you know, in comparison, uh, here's my signature slide that's produced by Jim Dunlop. And uh, that's long, this one's short, so you can see how big of a difference. It's almost half the size of that long one. And so, you know, that's got, uh, you know, I guess the good part about that is you can fit it on a finger, it's a little lighter. Um, if you're playing something like a one string diddly bow, a three string guitar, something like that, you can get all three strings. Or if you know you're only gonna be playing single notes or chord fragments, sometimes it's nice just to have a little slide to do that. The only downside is you can't slide all six strings. So if you have a chord and you wanna slide all six strings up, if let's say you're in an open tuning, you can only get, um, at the most, I guess, five, but you're, you're stretching to get five strings on there. You're basically limited to four strings with any slide that's that length. So uh, let, me, let me let you listen to the brass and bone. It's a similar tone, but the bone actually has even less sustain than the wood, believe it or not. That's the 
brass slide and the bone slot side right here. Here, even with vibrato, that, that note just dies in volume. But you do get a nice little hiss uh, because of the texture on the bone. Especially on those wound strings down there. So that's cool, and it's great, again, you know, if, you, if you're not familiar with what these different textures feel like and sound like, sometimes it's good to explore them, and a slide like this is nice because you get to explore two different textures with one slide. Um, this one uh, I started out with, uh, these are called, the I think, the knuckle slides, uh, also by Doc Harrison. And you can see it's basically an adjustable... Oh, the Chicago brass knuckle guitar slides. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> um, these are great uh, for lots of different things. One is that, uh, you know, you can adjust them so they're not so size specific because you can bend that. It's nice and strong, but you can bend it with your finger. Let's say you want to put it on your finger and you want to wear it. You can play with all four fingers now. <laughs> And you can flip it over, but you have to use your other hand to flip it over on this one, but it holds on really nice, and it feels just like a guitar slide. So if you're used to a guitar slide, this feels, you'll feel right at home with this one, even though it's a partial slide and can be flipped over in the middle of a song. like about these and I've never done this before until I got this slide is if you're playing lap steel you can actually get a very natural lap steel feel just using your fingertip and it feels really intuitive <laughs> Someone asked if you can use standard tuning for slide. Absolutely. Uh, I use standard tuning with slide probably more than any other tuning, especially when I'm playing in a band context. Right now I've got this guitar uh, tuned to a drop D tuning, which is uh, basically standard tuning on the highest uh, you know, five strings, but that low E string is tuned down a whole step to a D. But yeah, you know, if I wanted to tune this to uh, standard tuning, slide all you want on it. Um, the difference is you have to do a little bit more uh, right hand muting, a little more left hand muting, because unlike an open tuning where it's all tuned to a chord, you don't always want to hit more than one string. Sometimes you only want to hit chord fragments, well basically always. You never want to hit all six strings in standard tuning because it'll sound like this. You know, it's like, you, you don't, it's not really a chord, you don't want to sound like that. If you want to learn how to play in standard tuning though, Go to my website, justinjohnsonlive.com, on the store page. Uh, I've got a full DVD, a full-length DVD with tab books, uh, me teaching how to play in standard tuning. So I actually learned in standard tuning, and while it was a little more difficult um, at first because of all the muting techniques, you actually, I think, become a much better slide player long-term because you learn how to control everything you're doing by, by muting out those notes you don't want to hear. And uh, let me give you a, an example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to use my, my signature slide, the Justin Johnson signature slide. This is a stoneware ceramic slide that um, I, I designed with uh, Jim Dunlop, and uh, they do such great slides over there. 
This one's really special. It's got a great sustain, great feel. And um, look at my right hand when I'm playing. I'll show you what I'm talking about when I play in standard tuning. Um, let's say I'm playing on the highest, you know, those, those uh, bottom two strings there. With my thumb here, I'm actually muting those, uh, those top four strings. So you won't ever hear those. When I play on the highest string, I'm actually muting the bottom five strings there, the top five strings with my thumb. <laughs> so you can see, you know, uh, with, with that muting, you can play nice clean. But if you don't mute it, then it's more like. And you get all of those strings rattling around. So that's what I teach in my uh, standard tuning for slide DVD is how to control those other tones. Um, the other one from Doc Harrison here is a wine bottleneck slide. And this is a nice classic bluesy style slide. And uh, it's actually, it's literally the neck from a wine bottle that was cut. And what's nice is he cut both ends off. So normally there's a little lip on a wine bottle, a lot of wine bottles, and that can actually get in the way of the strings sometimes. So when you cut that lip off the top and you get a nice straight section of the bottle, and then you, you cut this down too, you have a really nice, clean, smooth playing uh, guitar slide. And it's cool, I love that he put the cork on it too. That's just a nice aesthetic thing, you know, that it doesn't, you know, totally affect the tone from what I can tell. But it is nice because it keeps the, uh, if, you, if you don't like the slide going all the way down your finger, whether it's your pinky or your ring, that, that stopper actually helps it, helps prevent it from going too far down your finger, which is nice. Um, the difference though, and this is what's great that you can remove it and take it off and put it back on, is that if you want to play with the tip of the slide and do really intricate work, you can't really do it with the cork on, so you have the option to take that cork off. So when I'm playing with the tip, you get a lot of control and you can do some things you can't do on single notes that, you, you know, when you're playing with the whole surface of the slide. difference too when I was holding that note out the thing about glass and also ceramic uh, when you have a nice glaze on it like that is you you get a really nice transparent tone that's one of the things that's nice about a smooth a really smooth surface so you can hear the note but you don't really hear the string a whole lot compare that to let's say the bone You get a lot more sound of the surface of the slide scratching against the strings, which is either good or bad depending on the style you want and how you're playing, what you want the song to sound like, and so on. To get a, another, uh, another tone and a totally different style of slide altogether, check these out from uh, Slidewinder. It's a company I uh, recently heard about, sent me some great slides, and aesthetically these are just awesome. They look like really nice rings, really cool rings. But if you look on the other side of the ring, you see this flat surface here with the edges rounded up and it's at an angle. You can actually take that off, um, put it in the angle you like that's good for your playing style and glue it back on. That's what I did there. 
Again, these are adjustable, so you can bend the metal on two sides to make sure, you know, it's not, it's basically one size fits all depending on what your finger size is. And you can bend your fingers because that's at an angle so you don't re really reverse the, the slide around like you do with some of these other ones. You just play it like that, and it actually it looks, it looks like you got a cool ring on. And because this one has a flat surface as opposed to a round surface, you get, um, you get a lot of the, especially on the wound strings, you get a lot of that uh, string noise. Which is really cool if you want that sound, especially, you know, I've got this kind of vintage rock slide tone. I'm going straight into the uh, tube tape echo here. It's a little uh, uh, tape delay. And then straight into the square amp out of that. And so that's what gives me that natural tube driven distortion. Uh, the tone out of that square amp just sounds like a time machine when you play through it. But it sounds great when you want that like nasty string noise on the, uh, on the low strings. It sounds great with this kind of setup. So let me tune back down to uh, drop D tuning. So I can do a nice chord. one has a different a slightly different playing style but all I can say about all of these is that um, they're very quick to learn especially if you're already familiar with slide so there's not a big learning curve even though there's a slight difference maybe in the way you tilt your hand something like that I'm gonna play this one again from uh, jet slide and uh, when I do this I'm going to play with uh, another company here uh, strum and comfort has some really cool new concepts for uh, finger picks. And so one of the things, you know, um, I, I like playing with a thumb pick, especially on acoustic guitars for certain styles, but it never quite feels as organic as I want it to feel. It never quite feels like you're just holding a guitar pick and it's attached to your thumb. You know, that, that rigid plastic with a lot of the thumb picks you'll find on the market feels kind of alien. And especially when you try to do an up pick, like you can pick down comfortably with most thumb picks, but when you come as far as like an upstroke, a lot of times you just get tangled up in the strings and it doesn't work very well. So what's cool about the design from Strum and Comfort, they've got several different pick designs, but you can basically take this off. You've got a pick inside, like an actual pick, and you can use that. You can replace the pick that they give you with one of your own favorite picks. You put that around, and so it also is whatever size your thumb is, you can just comfortably get that on as loose or tight as you want it. And so it's just like holding a pick, but it's attached to your thumb. So it gives you a nice, uh, a nice feel to where you can play. But then you can just let go of the pick and keep playing.
does feel natural. That's, I, I love it. It's my new favorite thumb pick for sure. And uh, like I was showing you too, um, if I want a different thickness, I've got a, you know a full set of Justin Johnson signature picks also from Jim Dunlop. Let's say I want a little bit thicker pick for a different tone. You can just put that pick in there, get that to the size, get it right and comfortable on your thumb. And now you've got your favorite pick attached to your thumb. So again, you can play. Play it like a pick, but then you can just let go of it and it's still there. is you know when I'm playing with a thumb pick listen to this when I play without it so you get a different tone and again you know that's one of those things I don't play a thumb pick on every song but there's certain styles that I really love the thumb pick on and I, I wouldn't really want to play it without a thumb pick so again, you know, a lot of people ask me uh, all the time online in lessons, uh, you know, what do you do in this context? Or, you know, what do you do with thumb picks? What do you do? Do you use a pick? Do you finger pick? And almost always the answer is it depends on the song. It depends on the style. If I'm doing a studio session and it's like, a, you know, fast, like country twangy music, I will always use a pick and I'll, maybe I'll use a thinner pick than I normally would. If it's something like acoustic strumming, I want it to sound cleaner and more vibrant. I might use a flat, uh, like a, uh, a thin pick. If I want it to sound loud and aggressive, I'll use a thicker pick. So always choose and get to know your, uh, your gear and choose accordingly. to learn the voice of each slide. So each slide has a different voice. And this is one of the, I guess you could call it a, the tricks to getting to know this kind of thing, um, is to try a, different, a few different styles. So one thing I like to do is pick one string, and I think the, uh, the D string is a great one because it's, it's high enough in pitch, but it's a wound string. So you really hear how much uh, texture the slide has. You uh, basically mute every string except for that one string. And then I like to play a note and see how many, how long it holds out for one, and then how that voice changes as you move up and down the, the frets. Chicago Brass Knuckle. So you can hear there's a different tone, but I think the sustain is one of the things you, you hear a big difference on. So go to the slide, you'll probably hear a lot more sustain and a, a little less uh, go with the glass. 
you'll probably hear a lot more sustain because there's a lot more material in there. That's really where the sustain comes from is how dense is the object or the material and then how big is it? How much of that do you actually have? <laughs> see those there's so many different elements you know that go into picking the right slide picking the right pick then it's like you know once you say okay maybe I like ceramic better than metal or maybe I like uh, you know glass because it's quieter on the strings then it's then you have to decide well what diameter do I like what size fits my finger best is the slide adjustable how much uh, material is it actually made out of because that's going to affect how long the sustain uh, lasts and um, then, you know, what just works with your playing style and your genre of music? Do you like a versatile slide or do you know like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make this slide, all I'm gonna play is slide on this song. Then it doesn't really matter as much sometimes whether you can flip it around. But you know, something like, you know, this again, it's great when you have a song. Let's say there's a song like Nikki said, you know, this sort of like having the Allman Brothers, you know, on a finger, uh, on a ring, you can just go between, you know, that Dickie Betts, uh, and then you can go, uh, now you're Dwayne. Back to Dickie. So you have that option. When, uh, you know, I really like that design too because it is comfortable. You get really used to flipping that around. And uh, let me tell you a trick though. If you're, if you're used to playing slide and you want to pick with your fingers. You can still play with those three fingers. And that's one of the ways I always tell uh, people to practice the slide. Uh, is, you know, there's two things you can do to really get comfortable holding your slide no matter what slide you're using, uh, no matter what style you're playing. And the first, tri uh, the first trick is to just wear your slide, even if you're not playing anything. Wear it around the house, wear it, you know, all day long. Wait until, you know, wear it basically until you forget the slides there. So you're not always thinking, oh, how do I hold on to it? How do I get control over it? You naturally develop control on the slide just by having it on your hand. You don't even have to think about playing. But once you've done that for, you know, a few days or, you know, a week, uh, which I've done before, it really just becomes part of your body. And then um, when you go to the guitar, leave the slide on your finger, but don't play the slide. Just fret. Just play what you'd normally play. you forget again you forget the slides even on your hand and it's also great for in, like increasing and working on your pinky strength because if you have all four fingers this happens to a lot of guitar players especially when they're first starting out first learning to play lead is you just ignore your pinky you know I see a lot of guitar players with their pinky almost just out of the way <laughs> you know they'll be playing with these three fingers and you never get the the range you know you can you can maybe get from this fret, the third fret to the seventh there. But if I had my pinky, I could get two more frets up there in the same range. And so with that slide, I like it on my ring finger because I can still get that range with my remaining fretting fingers. And I can still make a lot of the chord shapes I wanna make. I can still do a lot of the scales, the riffs, bending. 
because I've increased the strength and dexterity in my pinky by leaving that slide on. And then when you want to play slide, if you practice that, you kept it on your finger, you practice with your fingers, it's just become second nature to switch between them. exercise when you start getting comfortable with it that helps me out on slide a lot is I'll let's say I'll just I'll keep a rhythm going or maybe you're playing with someone and then uh, play a riff with your fingers like a fretted you know fretted riff and then play it with slide because when you first start playing slide sometimes you limit what you're playing because you're not comfortable with it yet so this is a good exercise to really bridge the gap between your fretted solos and melodies and your slide melodies. And then you start getting past that, you can start using both at the same time. everybody uh, while you're here while you're watching I want to let you guys know I've got a contest going on right now and uh, you can find it uh, on the Facebook page here and uh, what it is is I'm giving away a free album bundle of all four of my albums uh, which is I think seven CDs all together well, it's, yeah, three double albums uh, and then a, another album with a DVD and a CD on it and so um, it's a complete package it's worth a hundred dollars and I'm giving it away you can find out about it by uh, looking on the Facebook page here, and actually I'll put a link to it on the description for this live stream on Facebook uh, right, when I'm, right when I'm off air. And uh, basically all you have to do is go on, there's seven different ways to enter, and you can enter over and over again uh, by subscribing to my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, checking out my Instagram page. Basically just going to social media, making sure you're connected, and uh, which you want to be anyways, I'm sure if you're watching this. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if, uh, if you get your name drawn, it'll be in about five days, I think, when I'm drawing the name. You uh, might win all four albums, so that's fun. And uh, make sure you check out the website, justinjohnsonlive.com. I'm going to keep having fun with these slides here. And also make sure to check out these companies, Jet Slide, Doc Harrison, uh, Strum and Comfort, uh, Slide Winder, all great products. Uh, and keep, keep getting gear, keep checking it out. Uh, if someone tells you, you know, yeah, you've already got a slide, you can't get another one, just tell them, Justin Johnson said I should get lots of slides and lots of guitars because that's how you learn how to become a better guitar player. So you can, you can blame your gear addiction on me. Uh, it works every time. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh -huh.